teacher check that there's nothing. of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I had talked about this at the last board meeting. 
uh, that there's a presentation coming that would be showing the residents, and I'll explain that a little bit more in my manager's report. Okay, thank you. I have a comment for, for Greg. Uh, at the last board meeting, I questioned with some vigor, Van Hart's uh, management of the water system during the water tower uh, repair. And I put you guys on the spot. Wanted to get back to you because I, there was a follow-up meeting. I wasn't part of it, but I got a report back from the mayor and from trust increase that said it was a very productive meeting. Manhart uh, had pinpointed some problems, come up with some uh, solutions, and also we're looking to create a long-term plan for maintenance work on our water system, uh, which is something I asked for. So I wanted to thank you for your positive response and the movement to the board and the mayor for participating in this uh, meeting. Job well done, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, we appreciate it. Uh, I know Terry and I very much enjoy working for the village and we'd like to continue our good relationship. Looking forward to it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up is our village attorney, Jim Rack. Thank you, Mayor. So, uh, just a couple of things tonight. We uh, prepared the Comcast franchise agreement that's on the business portion of the agenda for this evening. Also, we had a couple of conversations and consultations with Mayor Soto and Coach um, Gordon Metzler uh, regarding a couple of businesses that are considering location in the village. Um, none that we can disclose at this time, but uh, some good conversations. Okay. Uh, with that, we'll move on to our public works superintendent, Jeff Gateway. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Greg actually came with me the tower is done, and I think it looks fantastic. It does. Okay. And I'm hoping to never have to go through that again in my career. <laughs> my Amen. Amen. Yes. Short career coming in that? Yeah. No, I'm hoping to put a long career. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Oh, just one question on that. Since you just brought up the car. On the tower, there's one section there that's still white on the very crown, I think. I mean, I saw one guest last week, it was. Yeah, no, that's, they, they yes, finished yeah. it literally okay. last week. Yeah. Okay, I didn't look past it again. So, so. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. We're they right they, right they right. ran out of the tan paint. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. And that part is not affected by the water being in it because it's right. the top. Okay. So, yeah. Gotcha. So it was just recently completed. Okay. Yeah, that was it. all taken care of. Um, we have been uh, feverishly busy uh, trying to get a lot of projects done. That we had hoped to get done in the summer. Uh, we're a little bit behind on a few things, but we're, we're getting back on track. Um, we've done uh, some sidewalk repairs. I have just received, as of today, the, the handicap mats that are going on all the corners uh, in the Misty Hill subdivision. We're hoping to have those installed by the end of next week. Um, we have also done some sidewalk repairs and just throughout the village there, there were some known bad spots. We have a couple more we have to pour yet. There's a couple that still have to be taken out and, and redone. Uh, hopefully we'll have all that done by the end of next week. Uh, well, one is back online and running. We are still awaiting to have those two booster pumps redone. Uh, the parts have been ordered. I think it was a four to six week lead time. Uh, so everything there is functioning well. The SCADA system is working. Everything is good. Uh, touching on the meeting, uh, that Jerry mentioned that we had with Manhart, I was involved in that, as was Wally. Uh, we came up with some good solutions, uh, some procedure changes that uh, are going to take effect shortly. Terry Brown did supply me with uh, like a weekly checklist of, of things that are to be looked at on a weekly basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. Uh, I will be checking these uh, on a weekly basis, meaning entering the well house taking the form, we're going to have a binder in there, so uh, we know what's going on, we know what me and Eric's doing, and we'll have a little bit of accountability. A better tracking system. A better tracking system, so we know if, if, if something doesn't test right, we're aware of it, you know, more so, you know, in a timely fashion, so uh, I think it's going to work out very well on that, so as soon as we fine-tune the, um, the uh, listed Terry for <coughs> Kind of massaging for eight, so we'll get that program going uh, shortly. Uh, the other thing we've been working 
done is putting new mulch around the lake. We have uh, used all of the ash trees that were cut down in the ground. I have gotten uh, donated by uh, Grace Lake 10 dump truck loads of mulch, uh, which we just ran out of this afternoon. I'm uh, hoping to get another 10 loads from Grace Lake, and I think they're more than happy to get rid of it. We just have to go pick it up. Uh, hopefully next Monday we will have the other 10 loads available and we should be able to get just about the whole thing done. Right now, we started on the north end by the gazebo and we made it all the way around the west end and we're just about a third of the way down Tall Oak Drive now, so we've accomplished quite a bit. Um, so hopefully, if uh, things work out the way I'm hoping, uh, we should be able to get the whole thing done in the next couple of weeks. Um, and for right now, that's uh, all I've got to report. Is there a schedule for stone removal from the next board of trees? Yeah, there is. Um, we were planning on starting it this week. Uh, unfortunately, Dave Schultz's wife uh, went surgery yesterday, so he's going to be tied up for a few days. So I won't let you guys do it in, that, in this heat anyway. It's, you know, yeah, that probably would be The snow can wait a week, you know? I mean, really? <laughs> yeah. It is a tad warm up. Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's definitely on the radar screen. We're hoping to start yeah. next week. Okay. Um, hopefully the weather will go Are we going to grind it down to below ground level? Is that what Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, basically what's going to happen, we're going to grind everything out. We will leave the, the, the grindings in the hole so there's no hole there. And when they come and put the new tree in, we take the grindings out. And, yeah, they will put, they will install the new tree where the other one used to exist. Okay, thank you, sir. Jeff, uh, did, have you talked to Chris Electric yet at all about any of those uh, interlex or you know, safeties that we were thinking of putting in? Yes, actually, he is going to be uh, in town tomorrow. Spending the day in town doing that and a list of chores. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a couple of things we wanted to adjust the timing on the generators so they right. cycle a little bit more. So he's going to be working on that. Uh, there's a couple of lights out. The uh, electricity for still water panel. Yeah, they're going to hook up the, okay. on the electric. Still water fountain. Street light uh, repairs, we have a few street lights out. Okay. Well, just yeah. No, he's aware of it and we're trying to um, I think he's actually gonna go in there tomorrow just to kind of pre plan and take a around to see uh, what the most co cost effective way is to right to get this done. Because everything should be there. Yeah, it's just a matter of making some connections. Maybe we'll uh, even have a 
Uh, to go back on display at one of our upcoming board meetings would be nice. So look forward to that. And our treasurer, Kelly Hensley, is uh, actually at her son's back to school night. It's back to school time. So uh, uh, I think that uh, finance can update us on what we need to know uh, what's going on in that area. Our clerk is on vacation. Roseanne, did she do anything with you? Okay. So we'll move on to the mayor's report. How about that? She's on vacation. <laughs> I wish I was on <laughs> Okay, let me touch real quick. Um, uh, Greg had mentioned the uh, sewer fee, the dollar fifty that will be added to anybody that re resides within the Northwest Fox Lake Sanitary Sewer District. And uh, if you look at the minutes, from my report last month, I talk about uh, the Northwest Sewer Advisory Committee meeting, which I have been attending those meetings. Um, Greg attends at the technical level. And this uh, will be on your bill as a special assessment for updating the sewer system and redoing the Ron Lake Beach Lagoons. Um, this will take effect on your bill January 1st. And there was a PowerPoint presentation at that meeting that they asked us to critique, <clears throat> which we did. And then they went back, fine-tuned it, and the Technical Advisory Committee then gave their approval. Correct, Correct. Correct. Yeah. Pared it down from a 25 slides down to about 18 slides. So, uh, as I stated at the last meeting, we would be then have this PowerPoint presentation forwarded to us, which we, we will then display at a board meeting, and then we will also put it on our website so people can click on, click on the link and watch it. Um, and we'll also put an item in our newsletter so people will have advance notice. So, this is the plan, but understand I don't have total control about when I get this PowerPoint. What I know is leading me to believe that it's safe for me to say that we can show this PowerPoint at the next meeting. If for some reason that's not true, then we will show it uh, at the meeting found. So there will be ample notice for the residents to understand what this is about, what it's for, and uh, again, if they can't attend the meeting, we will have the PowerPoint link on the website. I've been attending the meetings and I'll be answer. I think we're to answer any and all questions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here, here's the Reader's Digest version of why this has occurred, and then when you can see how they're fixing the system. The system has. Like, Greg, why don't you explain it? It's basically it's overloaded at the uh, interceptor sewer. Uh, basically, all of our sewers in this area, Fox Lake, uh, Lake Villa, all the Brown Lakes, all go into the same interceptor sewer and all the sewage gets treated at the Fox Lake treatment plant. Uh, essentially during high rainfall events, the sewers, a lot of the older sewers in this group uh, leak and that results in some surcharging at the plant, at the Fox Lake plant, and basically it robs the whole system of any reserve capacity that we have in addition to uh, the environmental impacts associated with sewer overflows. Uh, there's a good pictures on the uh, PowerPoint slide. Hopefully that'll uh, probably answer You're some questions. You're too kind, right? You're too kind. What he's trying to tell you is there are areas along the way where we have heavy rainfall where there is lumpy water coming out up into the streets, people. That's the bottom line. And you'll see that on this PowerPoint. <laughs> there are a number of things I could say that come to mind, but because this is public, I won't. <laughs> and the, the one thing I do want to say, and I will also preface when we start the PowerPoint, because we're not going to spend a lot of time going round and round on this. It has been round and round for several years. And I've been one of the people that have made my comments, but there comes a time where you have to say enough, we have to fix it. I could say very easily 
as anybody put on this board, including Jeff, former Mayor Ted Mueller. Our infrastructure is all new. We have very little old infrastructure. We can tell you exactly what we're putting into that system, whether it's raining or it's not raining. But that being said, when our houses were built, it was negotiated and a fee was paid to go into that sanitary sewer district. We are owners of that system. So as an owner, we have an obligation to pay our share of fixing it. And so there has been meetings and discussions and debates. And so I just want everyone to understand and understand that that's not up for debate, okay? You certainly want to understand how are they fixing it, is it enough? Is it too much? Is it the right thing to do? And that all needs to be explained. And so that's what the purpose of the PowerPoint will be. Correct. And that's what that dollar fifty is for. Can we like go into why we're fixing Brown Lake beaches and lagoons? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand the sewer system, but what does that have to do with the lagoons? That is part of the system. That is part of the system. That is part of the system. Why like the village hall are actually overflows for the it's like Ron Lake's deep tunnel project, but it's on the surface. Yes, that's exactly, exactly what it is. Okay. Right. 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 okay, now I get it. All right, that's okay. right. All right. More to come. Stay tuned. We're better than live cable TV that you could watch at home. <laughs> this is a PowerPoint you don't want to miss. <laughs> I know. One of my typical off the wall questions. Look at water. <laughs> have we ever looked at, or does it make any sense to look at? Connecting that side of the village to this side of the village. <laughs> I'm sorry. No can do. Can't do. No can do. No can do. No can do. Thanks, Jerry, for the idea. No can do. We haven't talked about secession. <laughs> <laughs> you know that this town likes to be in at least two districts on everything. <laughs> Saturday. 
Uh, it's on the website, it's on Apple Newsletter. Uh, again, some residents are kind of excited about the fact that they can walk down the park with lawn chairs and a picnic basket. So please mark your calendars. We have the next day, Sunday, is a rain date. If we get some god awful weather, we'll put out a CTY call and we'll try again for Sunday and hope that that works. But let's pray that uh, the weather god smiles on us. Um, also, I, I was going to read, but I, I, I know we're trying to cover a lot of things. Um, you know, there was an article some weeks ago in the Daily Herald, and um, I felt it kind of picked on some small towns, Haynesville being number one, and Green Oaks was another, and a couple others followed behind it, saying leading uh, uh, residents, or trying to lead residents and business owners to believe they were sitting on surplus funds. I wrote a letter to the editor. That's in the Daily Herald uh, that you can look up. I encourage you to do so. Um, we'll also be posting it in the next newsletter um, because that is not the case. As I stated in the letter to the editor, many small towns uh, do not have a separate fund for capital improvements. So a lot of municipalities, some that are right next door to us, that have these capital improvement funds did not come up on the radar in the same fashion that we did. And I explained to the reporter that called the treasurer, Kelly Hensley, and myself, although they didn't print it in the article, that we are in the process of setting up capital improvement funds so that funds are formally earmarked for specific projects. And that all goes down to what we've painfully been working on with understanding Next year, we have to replace this. Next year, we have to rebuild this. And as we know that, then we know each year we have to put a thimble or a bucket of money away into that fund. So we are in the midst of that process. And what that means is, particularly as we pay down these water tower bills, is we don't have a lot of surplus cash. We do have a reserve, we have savings, and that article led me to believe that having two months worth of operating expenses in reserve would be adequate. And I stated, and I want to be crystal clear again for every resident and business owner that's watching, that is not the case. You should expect us to keep six months to a year, and in the current economic climate in the state of Illinois, we're going to lead towards a year. That's where we're sticking at. And yes, we have money in the bank, and we also pay our bills on time. I hope you're listening, Springfield. Can you put that in? What else? Uh, it is indeed back to school time. Uh, we have some newly ordered signs, something different, something sturdier that will last longer, that will be posted in the next day or two telling our residents and people that come through our subdivisions, back to school, slow down, watch the stop arms on the buses. Yes, I actually talked to Jen, they should be in tomorrow morning. Okay, terrific. So I'll pick them up and distribute okay. uh, accordingly. Okay. And as a side note, as happens every year, we always have a little excitement with bus stops, and I usually get a couple calls. I usually have to call one of the transportation directors at either school district or both. So we, we had some excitement on the west end of town, but because of the upcoming construction on Washington with Cedar Lake, um, they are changing the bus route. Uh, so we had some discussion. Chief Perlini sent a couple of his officers out there just to do an observation. They met with the director of transportation, so they have modified things and we're keeping an eye on it. So um, we're just asking everybody to be patient and it'll all work out. So it seemed a lot better as far as I can tell today. So hopefully that's all coming now. Um, I will be quiet now. Uh, <laughs> and we will move on to the standing committees. Finance, Trustee Daly. Uh, just a couple things from Kelly. Uh, she has received the draft of the audit and reviewed it, emailed it back to Wolf and Company. And we're waiting for them to uh, complete the management discussion portion. And when we get that, that has the recommendations and their final comments. So that's the big thing we're waiting on. Uh, and then a reminder to village employees and to the trustees, we're in the beginning stages of upgrading our 
server, our computer server. So we need the staff and the trustees to go through your email accounts and clean up. And by clean up, we mean delete everything you don't need. That would include uh, your inbox, your sent items, your junk mail, drafts, whatever you can get rid of. It'll make that transition that much smoother. And that's what I have. Any questions or concerns on that issue? <coughs> okay, before I move on, I do see an item that I passed up that is very important. Um, there's a sign out in the foyer. We have on September 7th from 9 to 12, uh, pet vaccination and microchip clinic taking place for the Lake County Health Department. It's again on our website. Um, uh, they, they've held them in different areas and they contacted me and said, you know, we'd love to do one in Haynesville, and I said, we'd love to have you. It's convenient for our residents. I think Haynesville Road is an easy access. Uh, weather permitting, they're going to be right outside the foyer, uh, doing all the work out there. Um, they will be offering uh, rabies vaccinations and Lake County tags, uh, distemper, and microchipping. And the fees um, are less if your pet is spayed and neutered, and they're more if they're not spayed and neutered. So uh, I'll leave this up here. It is a cash only deal. And again, the information is in the foyer and on the website. Okay, let's move on to Public Works, Trustee Walkington. I don't really have a whole lot going on. You did a hell of a job on the water tower, Gary. Oh, uh, yeah, but <laughs> not. Thanks. <laughs> I'll have to cool you off to right there. <laughs> That's all I have. I'm feeling a chilly you exception. Yeah, I can feel it coming. Public safety, trust increase. Well, I think the village or just got passed down the media if I'm reading the sign language. Yeah, yeah. they could, please. Uh, you, may, you, may, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you may have to cue me in on a couple topics. One topic uh, we met tonight, and uh, I just <clears throat> noted that the permit for the crosswalk at uh, the total because it's in, the sign's been ordered, and it should be going up relatively soon. Uh, another issue that we came up having to do with bus stops is that we've noticed in our corner of the neighborhood that Hornets have taken up housing projects in many of the traffic signs. The stop signs, uh, some of the other signs have a U-shaped pole between the sign and that new shaped opening, there's a lot of hornets. So we know, found out about oh, So they're building homes there, maybe yeah. that's because you just drove around, Jeff. So, <laughs> kid, so kids outside of our homes were kicking the stop sign and went, oops, <laughs> when the hornets were pushed <laughs> out. So uh, we sprayed four on, on my property and on Wally's property. So we want to put this information out uh, to the parents and who's watching. The way we get this word out is have your kids not kick the stop signs. And if there are signs, uh, street signs, whatever, on your property, if you happen to notice it, feel free to spray uh, lots for warrants or be. Uh, and or contact the village. Or that was the next one, or contact the village. And we'll, we'll take care of that. Just we don't want anybody getting stung. And we're not going to send Dave Schultz and that you don't want to do No, in fact, in fact, I don't know if Jeff told you about the one we actually called and had professionally removed because it was too big for even Jeff to take out. It was yeah. huge. No one here crossing? Yeah. yeah. And, I, I, you know, there's been, it's been a year for them because uh, last weekend my husband and I were up in our attic over the garage uh, and interesting enough, he said, could you go into that corner? <laughs> <laughs> because he had destroyed a nest on the outside corner of our garage and was concerned that there were some inside. Well, they were. <laughs> Any other jobs for uh, I will love the Lyme disease and also the... Oh, yeah. And it, it's it's uh, been in a, on radio TV and uh, in the newspaper, so we just also wanted to reiterate the fact that evidently 
deer ticks are alive and well in Lake County. There's been more reported cases of Lyme disease, so uh, you can go to many online, so online sites, or even I think in the Arrow yesterday, it uh, gave an explanation of what symptoms to watch for for uh, deer tick bites. And then West Nile virus is alive and well also in uh, Lake County, so uh, take precautions being on evening for protection against mosquito bites. Lake County Health Department just sent the village uh, a link on the Lyme disease. So we just posted, it was too late for the newsletter, but there is a link. And, and again, I want to encourage residents. I, I think uh, Kathy's going to write an article for the next newsletter. Um, it, it's really nice if residents sign up for the email notice. Every time we post an announcement to the website, you will get an email of it if you sign up. This is separate from the CTY call emergency notification. Um, so go to the website and click on that. And then every time we add an announcement, so you, you can find the Lyme disease uh, link on the uh, website. And also there is a uh, article and that's posted on the website for the uh, mosquito hotline as well and uh, about the West Nile virus, because it's scary. And last thing for public safety, Wally, if you got to go, I can find the right one. Oh, that's all right. It's slowing down. That's okay. No, no, no. Okay. All right. I just framed the cage. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the camera off, Rob. Unfortunately, it's, unfortunately, it's slow and there's not much there. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, so, what are your words of inspiration for Brutal? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're moving on, gentlemen. We're going to go to wetlands and open spaces. Trustee Gooberstein. Well, I want to thank Jeff and his crew for all the hard work that they've done to uh, fix the path around Cranberry Lake. They've done a great job and we're thrilled. The next wetland meeting is Tuesday or Thursday the 5th at 7 o'clock uh, with some of my other hats. Um, as chairman of the Great Age Club for Seniors, we took a tour today of the Long Grove Confectionery Company uh, Chocolate Factory. Where are the goodies? We, <laughs> we had a really sweet time. <laughs> it's a really fun thing to do if you have uh, guests come in from out of town. I'm sure they'd be interested and they have a wonderful outlet store. Um, my other hat is as the representative to BEST, which is bringing everyone's strengths together. It's um, an organization that networks the, many of the social service organizations that uh, work toward the improvement of the Round Lake area and the municipalities, the library, the park district, the police departments are all part of it. And they sponsored the first back to school day, and it was for the Rob Lake School District 116. And um, community leaders from all of the different areas went to each of the different schools, welcomed the kids back. There were banners that said, The community cares, do your best. Um, we all had these bright yellow glow-in-the-dark t-shirts, and um, I think the kids were surprised and pleased that, that we were there and encouraged to have a great year. Um, and that's it. And I just want to add, uh, actually, our, our, our town's representation was George Ann, her husband George, and uh, resident of our Jersey, and then Jeff Gately, uh, our police chief, Bill Perlini, and myself were all at the Round Lake High School. Uh, Georgian does the tutoring there, and so it seemed like the place that we should be. So, uh, and uh, being the mother of two boys, I made every boy I could shake my hand, befriend, welcome him back to school. So, and I'm happy to say that everybody was very pleasant. Uh, I had nobody disrespectful. Uh, some kids look terrifying, <laughs> but it was an enjoyable morning. 
the seniors were glad to say it was their last first day of school. <laughs> Speaking of the tutoring thing, I just want to uh, thank those who took advantage of the article that I put in the last newsletter because I have had responses from the residents to help with our tutoring program and I really appreciate that. That's exciting. That's good to hear. Okay, thank you, Georgian. Let's move on to business. We have approval of a Comcast cable television franchise agreement. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Any discussion? Roll call. Do we get a discount for cable service for the village and for Jeff's office? <laughs> Jeff's office. That's, that's a pretty steep cable bill there for Jeff's office. I saw that cable, so it's not a curiosity. That was two, did you notice that was for two months? Two months? Oh, yeah, two months. Two months. Um, yeah, you do get a business rate, you don't get a discount, but what we did get is, um, uh, I'm trying to think if they called it, a, was it a construction allowance, Jerry, where we, they ran? They, they did about $3,500 worth of boring to get the cable underneath the lot, as far as I understand, for free. Oh, that, that's, that's a part of it. So, yes. Cable companies are very customer centric when it comes to you know, paying the cable. They keep paying the cable back across my back, back in my fence, and back in my process, and people around. Like well, you talk to Aki about that. No, no, no. I'm yeah. just going to cut it and take it out of there. <laughs> well, I don't like to hear that. Uh, is Comcast doing that? Or is it Red? Yes, it's Comcast. No, it's Comcast. I don't know who's doing it, but every time I go out to the yard and who's out to the yard, the cable that runs behind they, the fence. Yeah, because they should be doing no, it. I said Aki. Thank you. 